welcome back to Cruising As Crew. My name is Lucy and today we are going to be going through what to do if your ship gets changed at the last minute. So I have mentioned in previous videos that you need to be ready to adapt. Like things change from minute to minute on a cruise ship. You might go to bed thinking you're starting work at 5pm the next day. You wake up and the ship can't dock for some reason so it's a sea day so you actually start work at 10am. You think you have the whole day off in port so you get up, you've got your whole day planned. You're trying to get off at the gangway and it turns out you're on IPM which stands for Import Manning so you can't get off the ship. So things change all the time which means it's really important that you are good at adapting. But a lot of you go on board and you're like, yes, I am prepared to adapt when I am on board. But as soon as you apply for a job on a cruise ship, you need to start the adapting right away. Because in the cruise ship industry, nothing is ever, ever set in stone. And that is what we are going to talk about today. What to do when your ship is changed just before you're meant to join why it happens and what to do, how to deal with it. So firstly, why does it happen? So cruise ship schedulers try to schedule people in for a cruise ship way in advance. Because obviously there is a lot of moving parts on a cruise ship. There's a lot of crew members that need to come and go. So you best believe that they are doing this as in advance as they can. So for example, you are due to join Royal Caribbean Radiance of the Seas on May the 1st because you will be replacing a girl called Polly who is due to finish her contract that day. But Polly could be fired, Polly could break her leg, Polly could quit, she could decide she has had enough and wants to go home, Polly could have I mean, it's something that happens at home and she needs to leave on compassionate leave or maybe she needs to go early for a wedding or something. Or Polly could even extend her contract. So many things can happen to the person that you are due to replace. So let's say for whatever reason, Polly has to leave early. You will most likely get an email from the cruise line to say, Polly's left, we need you to join yesterday. And you are either going to say yes or no, and if your answer is no, which is fine, then you are obviously going to be scheduled for a different time or a different ship. Or you could simply get an email saying, look, we know you were due to join Royal Caribbean Radiance of the Seas, but we've actually changed you to P&O Azora. And this could be, for a simple reason, a more senior crew member has requested to go on Royal Caribbean Radiance of the Seas. And they are obviously going to prioritise what the senior member of staff wants than the newcomer, than the new crew member. Because when it's your first contract, you just go wherever they put you. You do not get a say. Or they might change you because Royal Caribbean Radiance might have changed its itinerary and it turns out that you are unable to get the correct visa to go around the itinerary. Like, there are a million reasons why this can happen. But usually it is because the person that you were due to replace has done something, they've either extended or they've left for whatever reason and that has messed about with your scheduling. This has happened to me a few times. The first time when I got my job with Harding Retail in September 2018, I was due to go on a Cunard ship. Then I was changed to P and O Azora. And then the last minute, two days before I was about to go, I was due to join P and O Oceana. So I had my ship changed three times. And I know plenty of people who have gone through this. Unfortunately happens more than you'd like it to that you know the day before you're supposed to join a ship that you've been planning to go on for maybe two weeks they're like actually you're now going somewhere else so what are some things that you need to do if this has happened to you if your cruise ship has been changed very last minute if they're like you need to fly tomorrow to this cruise line you need to email your recruiter and say please make sure that i am on the embarkation list of that cruise line. So what happens if things happen last minute, there can be a lot of disconnects in communication. So what happens is the new crew member turns up to the cruise ship really eager and excited and the officer there says, you're not on my list. And you're like, well, I've been flown out here by my company and I'm supposed to join. And the cruise line says, well, wait there and we'll get in contact with your company and we'll try and get you on the list. But this takes a long time. So you could be waiting around for eight hours 
in either the freezing cold or the baking sun with all of your luggage. It's not fun. So I really urge you that you email your recruiter back and just gently remind them to ensure that they email the cruise line to say, oh, by the way, we have a crew member joining the ship tomorrow. Please put them on your embarkation list because you'd be amazed. It's just human error, but you'd be amazed at how many times this is forgotten and you get to the ship and no one knows who the hell you are or what you're supposed to be doing. You also need to double check the flights that you have been given. So you need to check your landing time in accordance with the time that you are due to join the ship. So this doesn't really matter as much if they have booked you on a flight the day before you're supposed to join the ship, to join the ship, but sometimes they will decide to fly you out on the morning that you are supposed to join the ship. Now, you can, I mean, it depends on the cruise line and it depends on you, but I would say, can you please book me on a flight the night before rather than, I mean, flying, flying to a country the morning of and having to join the cruise ship, it's so stressful and it leaves no wiggle room. Like if that flight is delayed or maybe you miss a connecting flight, you could miss the ship and then you are stranded in this country. So, I would definitely recommend flying out the night before, but if, if they haven't said that that's a possibility, you need to make sure that, you know, the time that you are landing at that airport, you basically you've got enough time to get out of the airport, get a taxi to the ship and get on board that ship before the ship leaves. And I know you'd be surprised because these schedulers, that is literally their job, but they do make mistakes and I just have to put it down to the fact that they have to schedule so many people for so many different ships that, you know, mistakes are bound to happen. So it is your duty to make sure that you just double check these little things because ultimately you're the one that's going to have to deal with the consequences if you don't. You will also need to look on Cruise Mapper at your new itinerary. So it happened to one of my friends. It's so awful. She was due to go on a ship that was sailing around the Caribbean. She woke up, she looked at her emails and three hours before she was going to travel to the airport, she had an email from her company saying, actually, you're not flying to that ship. You're gonna fly later today to another ship. But this ship that she was now going to was going around Alaska. So she had like five hours to completely rethink her packing because she was no longer packing for the Caribbean. She had to pack for Alaska and some really, really cold weather. I mean, that is a really, like a worst case scenario. Most cruise ships go to warm places. Um, so the chances are, if you've packed your bikinis, you'll need your bikinis. But it is important that you check the itinerary of the cruise ship that you are due to join to just ensure that you do have the right clothing for that climate. Again, if you don't, you're on a cruise ship, you're going to be stopping in port. So if you're missing something, you will be able to buy it. So this doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. And the easiest way to deal with this is just to go with the flow. And it's easier to go with the flow when you haven't built up a huge expectation of it. So if you were told that you were going on Wonder of the Seas, one of the biggest cruise ships in the world, and you've done loads of research and you know exactly what you want to do on board and where you want to go, it's going to be that much more disappointing if you get changed to, let's say, Grandeur of the Seas, which is a very, very small ship in comparison. But there are pros and cons to every cruise ship. For example, if you were changed from Wonder of the Seas to Grandeur of the Seas, smaller ships generally have better itineraries because the nicer, less touristy places tend to have small docks. So the big ships just simply can't fit there. So I quite like being on small ships for that reason, but obviously there is more to do on the bigger ships. But anyway, the point is, I would recommend researching your ship enough so that you know what to pack, but don't research your ship to the point where, you know, you've built up some huge expectation because it's only gonna lead to disappointment. So I just wanted to touch on this because I've had a few messages from people saying their ship has been changed at the last minute, they're really frustrated, they don't know what to do, they don't understand why it's happening. Can they argue the point? 
Um, so I obviously just wanted to explain why it's happened because, you know, it's a lot easier to accept change when you're like, oh, okay, I, I understand what's going on behind the scenes. In terms of arguing the point, if you are a new crew member, no. You, you do what they tell you to do when you go where they send you. You can only really request things and suggest things when you've at least done one or two contracts. But anyway guys, I really hope you found that video helpful. If you did, then press the like button and also go and follow me over on TikTok. I would really, really appreciate it if you would show me some love over there and if you're feeling really generous, then you can hit the like button down below. But I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day, whatever you decide to do. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, really, like, more than you know. I appreciate it more than you know. And I'll see you in the next video.